This episode may contain strong language and adult themes. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the 22 Dropouts. We, as you know, are the least well-informed people within the rugby community. Uh, so I'm not alone in that. Say hello to my friends tonight. Hello, everybody. It's Celebrity Squares time. Hello. Um, hello. Sammy, you're looking very orange, dude. You're trying to be yes. like Donald Trump there, just not on your face. No, well, the sun's not playing anymore. It's not coming out in Malta very often these days. So I thought, you know, give myself a bit of a nice tan. Fine. Hey, have, have you got a kilt on? I don't know, but I've got my tartan trousers on. You've got tartan pyjamas on, haven't you, mate? I've got tartan trousers on, mate. Eh? Let's have a look at your tartan trousers. No, I'm not a Give us a twirl. Give us a twirl. Not because you'll, not you'll fucking Photoshop it. <laughs> the only reason he doesn't want to do that is because last time he gave us a twirl, he towed these pants off, and before that, we've seen his bollocks as well. Um, his trousers, so, didn't his skirt fall down last time he did that? Yes, his skirt did fall down. And he moaned because uh, he said we could all see his arse cheek. And, I went, and when I looked at it again, I said, that's not arse, that's pants. He went, no, my arse is that. Well, that's my arse. That was actually my arse. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'd, have worn, if, you'd have worn, if you'd have worn oddballs, um, and uh, oddballs, uh, you know, get, get go and check your odd balls out, and don't forget to support odd balls. We'll don't, be modelling our... balls today after what Pete bloody said. Well, we, I was going to say no. we're going to be modelling odd balls uh, <laughs> soon, thanks to uh, the, the guys at odd balls for our pants. Um, so I'm going to come to Julian and um, talk about the relationship. Uh, by the way, hi Jules, how are you? Hi. Good. Uh, excellent. Um, I want to talk about the relationship that you and Pete have on Snapchat. He's, he's an <laughs> I'm going to hold back here. <laughs> Edit. Beep. Oh, no, no, that's staying in. <laughs> I, do believe, I, do, I do believe YouTube don't like that one. He is the one oh, person. I've got, yeah, I've got to take that one out for YouTube. He's the one person, the one person that makes me want to delete Snapchat. <laughs> Or, no or be, very, be very nervous when opening any pictures. From yeah, I, I opened one earlier and it was a plate of food. And I was like, well, I'm not going to look at it. I'm just going to click at it and take it. And if it's sneaky, I'm going to turn it away. But no, it was a plate of food. Right, okay. So, Julian, Hello, was, you, Julian you have no the right to reply. So yeah, Julian, was setting down, Julian was setting down to have a nice meal. And uh, I decided to play a game called Cock and Bull. And you have to guess what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and guess what? He said to me, What was it? I can't sleep now. What was it? What was it? I can't remember what it was now. It was yeah, funny. Sleep now, you bastard. Yeah. Oh, this was the one last week, was it? Or at the weekend? That That's not today. New Year's Eve. I New was Year's planning to go to bed early, <laughs> have a nice early night, and get up on New Year's Day and go out hiking. But no, no, no. No. Could I sleep with that in my bloody eyes? No. <laughs> so what did you do? You should have watched, the, you should have watched a, a bit of porn and cleaned your eyes. Please don't show me that. Please do not show me that if I call you a wanker. I don't want to see any of that anymore. No. None of this. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hello, Chris. Hello Christopher. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what? You all right, mate? Now Chris. Chris. Watch your Snapchat, Chris. Pete wants Chris. it. Chris, what's Amy's... What's Amy's Snapchat? <laughs> you can get fucked. <laughs> can anybody actually hear Chris? Yeah. Chris, you're such a handsome chap. And you're all fan. That's not a sock. Or a no, chameleon. That's a real sock. <laughs> Walkies! Walkies! <laughs> Welcome to the man's best show his friend. 
Do you know, we're likely to get more viewers just by having 20 seconds of Pete's dog on the screen than oh, our yeah. words of wisdom as well. Um, especially as our words of wisdom mean I've forgotten to set the fucking clock going again. I, I, think, mean, I, actually... think Chris has, I think Chris has actually added Pete's Snapchat because he was just doing this a minute ago and shaking he his head. He probably has. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the reason why we can't hear Chris is because Amy's under the table. Chris, you're going to have to put everybody out of their misery because you know what Pete's like especially, and Sam's getting just as bad in his old age. And you've got to introduce Amy. You've got, she's gone to the toilet. She, did, she bombed me, and you all missed it. Perfect timing. Oh, hey, she bombed, did she? Uh, they when, never used to call it that in my day. When she comes back, I've got to ask her one question. All right? Well, Oh, God, don't do it, Pete. Don't do it. He'll ask you, he'll ask you the, the Chanel Mel. No. <laughs> anyway, right, so let's chat. Let's chat about something else. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we are moving on from your Snapchat. And um, it's... Uh, Talk about some rugby. No, it shows your bottle time. Julian's already... Excuse me. See, I actually took yeah. the bottle out this time. Uh, so, ah, <laughs> so actually, Julian, what you've done tonight is you've just done repetition. I have, yeah. You, you, you've literally showed us the same bottle as last week. No, I didn't so, show you the bottle last week. I showed you the box last week. But now I'm showing the actual bottle. Uh, and I thought I'd have a little wee dram while I'm at it as well. Well, I think you can down that now because you bought, you bought the same one out twice. That's Tarska. I'm going down in a really good whiskey like that. I'm going to sip it and enjoy it. Is that a Tarska? Yeah. And it's going to go down with my cup of tea nicely. <laughs> oh, you're not drinking tea and whiskey again, man. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't work, does it? Right. No, Chris, Christopher, what's, uh, <laughs> what, what have you bought for your show and tell tonight? Um, I've got a bottle of Jägermeister, Michael. Yeah, why? 200 times better than that Ponty bollocks you had last week. That's why. <laughs> only, only the, only the, the, the bloody English Parliament, all the bloody uh, Tory MPs were drinking what you had last week. Now you've got a proper <laughs> drink. Um, just remind us that Ponzi drink in case they sponsor the show. It was uh, Dead Man's Fingers Passion Fruit Rum. It's actually very nice. And who's that made by? Dead Man's Fingers. Dead Man's Fingers. <laughs> yeah, I normally drive down Reading High Street. Oh, look, Good there's the Dead news. Man's Fingers uh, uh, factory. Oh, there she is. You missed her. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. 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 Amy, Amy, you have to come and say hello now tonight. Hello, now. He's not uh -huh. going to give you, we're not going to give him a piece of no, Only like three people ever watch this. Come yeah. on, Amy. Come on. Come on. I've got a nice little thing to for you. Yeah, treat her like Pete's dog. He's got something for you to sit on, Amy. <laughs> yeah. He feels something up your bum and he has his hands on the table. It's not his hands. Oh, no. Oh, Pete. Oh. Anyway. Amy. Amy, well, keep... anyway, Pete. Amy. 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 Amy, we're going to keep abusing you until he can come on. <laughs> Amy, what? Uh, Amy, Pete, what have you bought tonight? Oh, I, I'm just um, top Trump Chris of being by having some apple sours. All, all Chris needed last week was a pink shirt. No, and a wine shirt that gone down really well. Sam, what have you bought for show and tell tonight? Uh, a cup from Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Uh, Julian, you're going to have to get him out of this. I'm going to call for you to do something se uh, separate now. Julian, show us your spices. See, I prepared here. I thought I'd bring something suitable for Pete. Jamaican jerk something. Jamaican spice. jerk spice. Yeah, jerk specifically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how you're going to follow that up next week now. You, oh, you've set we'll see, the we'll bar. See. You've set the bar quite high there, Julian, now. I know, but, but it's, there to, don't worry. it's there to be beaten. I got it. Anyway, a little bit of rugby talk, um, although we all knew about 48 hours ago. Uh, but, uh, I mean, even last night on Rugby Tonight, they were still saying, oh, wow, well, we're hopeful that uh, European uh, competition is going ahead over the next two weeks, which, of course, we all knew it wasn't. Uh, it just took the French this long to write a press release. But that's why it happens when you don't write in English. Silly Mr. Macron. Uh, anyway, um, so the European Cup has been, it's not been abandoned, it's been postponed. Yeah, and um, I think it's been postponed till whenever, but I think Pat Lamb has come up with the best, um, the yeah, best idea. Yeah, that was Saturday, wasn't he? He came up yeah, with that. Yeah, and he said, well, if the EPCR is postponing the tournament, 
Can we play the English Championship games that would not have been played those weekend? Can we play them now? Yeah, because so we, we need to build get a, a congestion somewhere. of fixtures later on, so we don't get injured players later on. Playing yeah, I agree. Time. You've got to build a gap somewhere, and if, if was... the Premiership can still play, um, you could have done that. The problem is, of course, it all comes down to TV and money. Yeah, um, but is the TV already got, or yeah, is it different I mean, companies? To, uh, no, because well, yes, it is. But aren't they broadcast on the same platform anyway? Probably, yeah. I mean, they're all do broadcast on BT, aren't they? Um, yeah, but it's the same company Sunset, production. Yeah, Sunset and Vine are doing the production. I think if where there's a will, there's a way, and clearly there wasn't a very big will because um, early Sunday it was like, no, it's off. We're not, we're not bringing the Premiership forward. Uh, we're, we're sticking with it. Whether they'll do that, ridiculous. well, there is a bit of a rider to that. So they're not bringing anything into this coming Saturday. Mm. We're still, we're still twelve days away from ten days away from the weekend after. So there is a there is a possibility that logistically it could be worked out to to bring them forward into that. They've got to get the clubs involved. They got to they, this all this involved. And as soon as they can do, if they can do that with one Zoom phone call and say, "Do we agree? Yes." Get the TV guys in the same call. Make it all happen with one. It'll take maybe two three hours to plan it all. It won't take long. No, and it's I not think that the, many games. How many European Cup weekends are there? There exactly. aren't that many left. Well, wasn't this the last two pools before they went into this funny? Yeah, so there's two games final there, thing one anyway. final dates, and then so there's maybe five weekends. So you take five of the Premiership matches that wouldn't have happened, that would have happened after the European Cup was on, and you bring them forward, or you shift the ones forward and then bring the playoffs forward. Yeah, I mean, like I say, if there's a, when there's a will, there's a way, um, and maybe maybe for for week two of this uh, this post postponement, we could do something again if they wish to. They may have all met and decided not to for for whatever reason. But it'd be interesting to find that out. Um, yeah, and then Boris could set up a massive vaccination tent up outside Twickenham and everyone going into Twickenham could get vaccinated on the way in. Fucking problem yeah, solving the, at 90,000 people in there. It would be, but the problem is they've got a standing line for three weeks to take their second back, their second injection. Yeah, do the first one 50% tonight. Oh, nobody, nobody's getting them anyway. So. Well, I, I could set up a big tent, lots of big tents and do all their tests on the way in. I've got really? plenty of them. And it's not a three-week turnover anymore. They're doing it in 12 weeks. Yeah, they're doing it in 12. They're not doing that in two Of years. course, they've moved both of them to 12 weeks now. They can do more people, more people yeah. with the first one. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Right, well, look at that. Politics and rugby covered in part one. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes for part two. See you after this. When you need clear and concise match official communication systems, Look no further than the brand new Axiwe 8350. Radios are always that they're always useful, they always help us, especially the Axiwe's where all three of us can be open at any time and we can have open communication. Available now from refcomsglobal.net. Invest in profits into match official development worldwide. to part two of tonight's 22 dropout um out where if you watch the outtake show we've just been talking uh, about some swedish rugby socks i think uh, because <laughs> julian and amy were having a chat and they were the only words that we could make out is rugby and socks uh, some rugby happened at the weekend didn't it well actually first of all some rugby didn't happen so um that wonderful game of rugby the very entertaining 1872 game the Second leg was off again, wasn't it, Sam? Yes, apparently so. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be played at all now, do you? No, no, it won't be. The couple will just stay with Edinburgh. Well, we, OK, then. Would Glasgow have won it? No. There you go, then. So, <laughs> that, you know, um, per perfect result. And I think that COVID is, uh, is the winner today on that. Um, talking about COVID being the winner, they won down at Saints again. Um, that one was often uh, as well. Although the instances of positive tests across the Premiership seem to be coming down, allegedly, we we wait and see. Um, but there's been loads of movements around. Um, it's almost time for rumour season again, isn't it? Uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Sanderson is going to sail. What do you reckon they're going to make of that one? Uh, pig's ass of it, probably knowing them. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I missed the game. Did anybody see how they got on at the weekend? No. We'll see. 
Yeah. No. Anybody interested how they got on at the weekend? No. no. No, okay. So, yeah, anyway, Pat Sanderson, uh, ex Exeter player, is off to uh, Manchester. Um, he won't be there for long. He'll soon realize that the River X is certainly more pretty than the Manchester ship canal and want to go home. Oh, I don't uh, know Manchester. Young... I went to university there. I love that city. It's a great place to go. Yeah, look how, far, look how far you moved away from it. Yeah, look how you turned out. <laughs> yeah, loved it. No, it, it, didn't, it. It didn't entice you to stay there, did it, boy? No. No, exactly. Uh, but talking about people going home, uh, Dai Young has, uh, has gone home yeah. to Wales. Yes! Good. He's I've been waiting for him to come back. He's coming back to Cardiff. Du- him and Dwayne. Dwayne Peel's working with the squad again in Cardiff. We've still got Richie Reese there. And uh, Dai Young's coming on as uh, director of rugby, I think. And, uh, Excellent. So just remind me, in Welsh rugby, how many other teams have they got to beat? Uh, three. In Welsh. Uh, and, and Julian, the reason why he's gone back is a new flock is there, isn't it? <laughs> it's lambing season, that's what it is. Well, to be honest, he's uh, Di Young had a pretty good record at Carl. If he left on a high to go to Wasps for something new, he'd been there a long time. And I think it's a very good time for him to come back. Because the club uh, <laughs> So uh, I, I'm looking I forward to that. seeing him coaching the boys again. Because he, he won't take any shit from him, I'll tell you that. Well, that's great, but okay, when we use the, when we use Cardiff rugby and shit in the same sentence, it's not normally about the, the coaches giving some out. It's just about the, the Welsh playing. It just take one. Um, the thing is, though, I used to watch. I used to be a regular down at the Arms Park when Dai Young was coaching, and it was a fortress back then. We didn't lose at home for like two and a half years on a trot. I think we lost. A, I think we only lost two games away as well, and one of them was a final against Toulouse. So, uh, yeah, but that's when that's when um, Welsh rugby actually had some gumption. Yeah, and it's gone a bit downhill since then. But a bit. It, it, yeah. <laughs> For me, it's nearly as bad as Scottish rugby. Nearly, but uh, I think um, I think Dai Young coming back is a great move, and I think he'll do wonders for Cardiff. He knows the club inside and out. He knows everybody there. Very good coach. Lots of experience. Great. So when he fucks it up, we're going to slag off my own club. I used to be a frigging member down there. I haven't got a membership anymore because I've been living away too long. Oh, they'll still have you. Can't drink at the clubhouse anymore. They'll they'll take your money. I'll tell you that now. I'm sure. No, they will. I know that because I used to have. um, They used to do an overseas membership, and I used to have that because it would then be cheaper tickets for me when I go and see them when I fly home. But I hardly fly home anymore. So. uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's not really cheap, is it? Because you've still got the cost of the flight. Yeah, but well, if I'm going home anyway, I'd go to the games. Why would you ruin the weekend away by going and watching Cardiff? Because there's a bar yeah. behind the stands that's quite cheap. Yeah, but there's <laughs> a motor the road. Bar end, little bar at the back, much quicker service. Little tip for anybody watching. Mate, there's that few people even when we've got... <laughs> Welsh rugby. If they're getting beer tips, how to get beer at stadiums, they might come and watch... No, they really won't, because they don't go for the beer, they go for the standard of rugby. And even the Welsh are now driving up the, uh, up the M6 and, uh, and, and going up to Jockland to watch their rugby. They're going down to Bridge End to watch rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you're in dire straits. Um, anyway, talking, talking to rugby, um, a few, few decent games. Pete, Falcons are doing well, aren't they, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, um, Adam, Adam Radwan, he's... Local lad from here, about 30 miles away. Um, played level five or at level five club for Billingham for, for a years and then got taken by the Falcons. God, he can score. He's quick. He's seriously quick. And he made Johnny May look like a second division player. I mean, he sat him on his ass. He rounded him. He scored an end to end try. If you haven't yes. seen it, go and have a look at it. It yes. is quality. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely priceless, especially as soon as it happened. I was straight on the group chat. Uh, Johnny May, he looked so fucking sick. He yeah. was properly done both ways. It was inside, outside, on my arse. Yeah, he got, he got absolutely flat. But, but Newcastle Vulcans, I mean, like, weren't they championship last year? Uh, yes. Yeah, they were. Uh, but, you know, the, one of the things that has been said is if the... Uh, I, I don't know how true this might have been, but one of the questions in the weekend was if the championship had been allowed to finish last year, 
uh, would they have actually made the, uh, the, the playoff and come up? Mm-hmm. Well, to be fair, it's not their fault if 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 everyone uh, happens to finish. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a bit like it, it, if you go up just simply because you were top of the league at the time, which they were, and uh, Saracens have got to got to go down. Well, tough. It's uh, it's your good fortune because Saracens fucked it all up. Uh, anyway, I thought, cri- I thought, then, oh, then, oh, now I they're probably going straight back up again without playing any rugby. Yeah. Well, um, no, well, well, I thought Johnny Mee is his best try, to be fair. No, they're on about um, cancelling cancelling championship, aren't they? Yeah, so then there's this issue of ring fencing the Premiership for one year, uh, which mean, could mean, could mean, so there's two options. One is Sarri's come back up, and they bring somebody like Ealing Trial Finders up because they know they're the ones that take them to court because the guy who owns it has got lots of money, so they could lose out there. Um, so we will offer an olive branch to uh, to Ealing and bring them up into the Premiership for a year and see how that works. Or you ring fence the Premiership and you exclude Saracens because they've done nothing, especially if they don't play any games. They've done nothing to prove that they deserve to uh, to be promoted. The issue with bringing Ealing up is: is the stadium big enough? Yeah, well, they'll go. They'll go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah they've already talked yeah. about going to play somewhere else. They probably, to be yes. fair, they're probably going to somewhere like Adams Park. Not a million miles they, away. But, well, actually, the Stoops, very close. How is it? Yeah, so you could just you could just literally drop down the South Circular and end up at the Stoop. Uh, but there's plenty of football grounds around as well, isn't there? It's London. Yeah, they were ta- I think they were talking about playing at a footy ground around that area. I, I, w- I would think so. I would think that's what they'll probably do. Um, which one, though? No, I, well, I don't pay, pay that much attention to it. Um, so, yeah, great win for Falcons at the weekend. And another another loss for Exeter. Now, it wasn't quite a complete arse-kicking uh, uh, as they had the week before from, from Wasps, where it, if it wasn't for one really stupid missed tackle, they'd have ended on a duck. Um, but they did lose again. And it was, again, I mean, this weekend's rugby has been, for the most part, what I've seen, very exciting. The, the, the Wasps game, the Exeter game was exciting, and, uh, and the London Irish Quinns game was as well. Um, uh, do we think that Exeter are taking losing well? No one takes losing well. <laughs> I mean, I think that they're not fielding full strength at the minute, are they? So. Well, they did last weekend. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't forget, there's plenty of teams that have been like that. Wasps have been like that for <laughs> half of last season, part of this season as well. Um, but, you know, sometimes other people are better than you and they play a better game. You and, just, the, I mean, Baxter, at the end of the, the, the game, he said, we've got no excuses there. We're just in a bad patch at the moment. They had a full squad out there. They had a strong squad out there and they got taken apart by Bristol. Yeah, they just didn't play the right type of rugby, I don't think. No, they, they, play, got, they got bullied. They, and um, Bristol played better rugby than them, and uh, it worked for them. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. We're not decrying Bristol here. Bristol are a very, very good side. Uh, you know, really well coached by Pat, um, and they work hard. They're a good cohesive unit. And I did like how the management of the scrum was done. You two, if you're messing around, you'll both be in the bin. Yeah, and we'll bring some decent props on. So Carl goes along and sends both of the buggers off. He followed through. He said he was going to do it and he followed yeah. through and sent them both off. Got two new props on and all the problems at the scrub went away. No, it's, it's, it, it, it's funny how that is, isn't it? I know. Genji, Genji. Yeah, I, 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 do you know what? Genji's kicked off. Yeah, that's right. Genji. We need to get people who actually know he how to do it. He can kick off all he wants. The ref got it right. I know he did. I know he did. But Genji's saying, what if we can send both of them off when one of them's at fault? And it's like, well, it wasn't. Both of them were dicking around. Both of them were at fault. That's both, the issue. both of them were at it. Why do we want to scrum? So that, went, just proves how, how li- that just proves how little a lot of forwards and front row players know about front row play. So Genji can't sit, speak till he gets a haircut because he's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Get him on here. Hashtag you heard it here first. Himself. Right, honestly, what a fucking dickhead. But never mind. <laughs> but the I can give him my address. I don't care. But I got to shave him. Can we? Sorry, can we talk about the most exciting game of the weekend now, please? Most no, exciting no, no. game of the weekend. You mean Cardiff and Netley? 
No, 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 no. We, we've got to talk about. I mean, like, like two of the two of the tries that were in the Exeter game. Yeah. Uh, the first try from Exeter shouldn't have even been allowed, and the second try shouldn't have even been allowed because he never even grounded it. Yeah, so that was the one that we saw a lot, lot later on, wasn't it? That uh, it it, uh, it stayed up in the air. Um, but I, on on first reviews, TMO come back in and cleared it, didn't they? I watched the game on on Sunday. Who oh, I can't remember who it was. Was that good? Was that the London Irish shit Quins. Yeah, that was a decent game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, twenty-seven yeah. all draw, wasn't it? Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not sure we can put this bit in. So if you're just joining us after we talk <laughs> about a try that wasn't given and we're now all giggling, it's because we've just had to delete what Pete said again. Because Pete said... Mate, will you stop? <laughs> what, was the, what, was the, what was the question for the, for the try that wasn't a try? Oh, so the try that wasn't a try was white one and white three went in in front of the man and he got drove right. over like a proper good figure, right? They went over. And when he slow-moed it down and everything, but that should have been picked up by the AR. See, easily. I saw that. that yeah, but I also, saw that, but I thought they were side by side. I'm happy that a try's been scored because you check the ground in around Martin. So you don't have to. In, in, in the Irish Shit Quins game, you don't have to check it. The the TMO will review every single try, and if they think you're wrong, they will tell you and bring it back. In fact, that did happen. I'm just trying to remember which game it was in. Um, Does that all depend on the question that's asked? No, so they, no, no. So they don't have to ask the question. So there was one particular one, and I can't remember the game it was in, but it was in the right hand, and it seemed to. It, was it Barnes's game? Uh, <laughs> Hold on, yeah. hold, hold on a minute, hold on, right? Stockport are playing West Ham and someone's letting a massive firework display off just by the ground. <laughs> They've had to stop playing everything. <laughs> <laughs> 17 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, professional football. Sorry, I thought that was funny. Very good. Anyway, um, yeah, so there was the one where um, the it, it looked like a good try, but even without a review. So you don't have to ask the TMO for a review. They will go back through it. And one of the things you will hear on the, on the ref mic is the TMO coming in and saying, you're all clear. Or they'll say, I want you to have a look at this. And that did happen once uh, this weekend when uh, there was a ball that was on the right hand um, and he seemed to lose it. Who was it? That, it wasn't that, Wayne. That was, that was uh, London Irish. Was it the Irish game? Yeah. Uh, and then it rolled into the left hand, still on the body and everything. It's whether it moved forward and under control and then he, he sort of... Uh, Did he get it? There. So, no. So, initially, yeah, he gave it. No problems at all. Everybody's coming walking back. No question to the TMO, but because the TMO automatically reviews these now, uh, then he says... Do not allow uh, uh, what these happen. Stop, the stop, stop the kick. Stop the kick. Stop the conversion. Don't allow the conversion. I need you need to show you a potential knock on, and then that's when they went to review. So th there's a backdoor way of doing it with uh, with with the TMOs as well. Um, but uh, no, th those weren't picked up. There was another one where potentially a leg was in touch, but I think even uh, on rugby tonight they said we did look at it for 30 minutes before we found the right slow-mo, the right frame and everything. Oh, to let, uh, the there's no way they would have seen that. There was absolutely... Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I, I don't think you could have really given that. They, To be fair, though, they looked at it. They did all the angles. They reviewed them. But unless you're blowing it right up, as they did uh, uh, after the game in the uh, with the pundits, there's no way you'd have seen that, even with just the normal TMO. Um so uh, that sort of covers the uh, the weekend's rugby, doesn't it, Chris? No, no it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the Pro 14's been shit the last few weeks. And then Cardiff and Slethley turn it. up. Cardiff and Slethley turn up this weekend and have a fucking blinder of a uh, first half and parts of the second half. <laughs> Not the whole game was good. Okay. <laughs> so, so they had Especially a good first half Williams, part of the Liam second Liam Williams half. getting red carded was just like, oh my God, what the fuck are you doing? And uh, What did he get carded was, for? Uh, he went head on head directly into a ruck from the side. 
Was that Craig? Yeah, yeah, Craig refed it. Craig's body. You could see Craig's face was like, oh, fuck, when he saw it. And he was like, <laughs> I've got to go red card with that, don't I? I'm like, yeah. But uh, yeah. Craig had another good game. And uh, the only thing I'd say about Craig's game on the weekend was, smile, you fucker. You look miserable as mm-hmm. sin on the pitch. <laughs> Yeah, what referee. about your favourite? Because because last week you were you were quite keen to give some feedback to somebody who was a bit slow. Oh, Benny Wenny. Yeah, ben, a little bit, a little bit. Ben Benny was on Wenny. touch. Ben was on touch for Craig on the weekend at the Cardiff game, and he had a very good game. I've got to say, lots of good input. You can see him giving it to him, working with Craig really well. So he had a good game this weekend as well. So, uh, in fact, so the whole talk about we... talk about people working on the line, Pete. Um, your good mate um, uh, I, 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 and Adam Woodthorpe was on the on the line at uh, at the weekend as well. How did you feel about his performance? He inputted a lot. And I, mu- yeah. I must correct myself. It's not Adam. It's Anthony, isn't it? Anthony, yeah, uh, Anthony. Yeah, yeah, but he. I tell you what, though. Um, what's the name of that caretaker, the janitor in the Simpsons, the Scottish one? Because the way he's got his beard, he looks just like him. Willie. Uh, Willie. There you go. Yeah. On that bombshell, it's time for a quick break and we'll be back with you right after this. Of uh, 22 dropouts, don't forget. Look up there, you can check us out on our social media channels. Uh, what's uh, not WhatsApp, it's not a social media channel. In fact, the way they're going, it's not going to be anything anymore. According to Elon Musk, you've got to go and download Signal. So, there you go, Signal, you can sponsor our show. Uh, we've just got you another 10 million uh, subscribers. Uh, but you can check us out on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, and on Twitter at 22 dropouts, just above you. Um, now, um, we, there is one more thing that we've got to talk about from the weekend, one more bit of rugby uh, in that sense, and that's the Wasps game. And it's only because Chris wants to, but also there was nearly a hundred. Look, look at him, look at him. He's getting all excited, bless him. Amy, Not calm him down, otherwise he's going to make a mess in your, uh, in your le- living room. Um, the curtains are going to get it. The curtains are going to stick together again soon. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, nearly a hundred points in that game uh, but Chris you've got a problem with what everybody's talking about yeah you know there's some absolutely fantastic attacking rugby there like akin to Southern Hemisphere rugby offloading line breaks the lot and all people have asked about is how bad the defence was it's like yes the defence was pretty shit not going to lie in both parts but can we celebrate the fact that the Northern Hemisphere are actually playing exciting rugby for once Chris <laughs> Chris, 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 I've got one question for you. What? How shit was the defence, though? I think we're fucking horrendous. I'm not saying that. But like, how it does, Lou, was absolutely immense. Now, there is, there is one thing I, I, one problem I have with Wasps at the moment, and that's young Mr. Umaga. Um, I mean, you, they, they proved they can't play him at 15, because <laughs> he was a bit shit the other week. Um, uh, guess what, Lee? He's even fucking worse at ten because no. he leaves holes that he can't. At least when he's at fifteen, you could, you could, if you really wanted to, you could get the wingers to cover because th- there's that more. You've got more space. You've got more time to react when when you're deep in field. But well, if I'm, he keeps leaving holes like that in in, in, in when he's playing ten in that nine ten channel or by the breakdown, man. People are just going to keep going through him. And they targeted him on uh, on the weekend as well. But they also targeted Lima Sopawaga because he can't tackle for shit. Well, neither can Umanga. We don't have an out and out 15. No. Um, we don't have an out and out 15, and that's where we're lacking. And you wonder why the conversation was about defence. Hmm. 
Correct. There you go. Uh, so, so we're going to. We're going to take the conversation off defence. Um, although um, I think Mr. Sinclair has got a uh, d- to host his defence tomorrow night, uh, as he appears before a hello. Anyway, um, uh, Mr. Sinclair has got a uh, uh, a hearing tomorrow night because he was cited uh, following his. Um, well, it wasn't an exchange; it was an expression Outburst. of opinion. Outburst. You'd call it an outburst. I call it downright fucking rude. But interestingly, um, that sort of thing is being picked up more and more at the moment because there's no crowds. So it's getting picked up on the ref mic quite quite a lot, uh, which is not nice. And it shouldn't happen when there's crowds there or when there's no crowds there. Um, but that was, you know, former teammate or not, that was a direct dig at the referee. He didn't say, oi, sir, are you fucking joking? Or, oi, dicko, what the fuck do you think you're doing? But it's the inference and, and, and the way in which he said it. Um, and I know he's come out and apologised on Twitter. Big fucking deal. A, you shouldn't have done it. You know you shouldn't have done it. And you should have apologised damn sight quicker than that, son. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. The pitch when he brought him in. So no, I brought him in to talk to him. He could have gone, really sorry, ref. I just have blurted out, really yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that yeah. to me... But there and then, it would have been... Even after Dicko had a word with him, he still fucking dismissed yeah, him. Turned him, him back, blinded, walked him, walked him, walked him back to him. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> worse. That's worse for me, <laughs> is the fact that he, he turned his back, he walked away, and he ignored him while he was talking to him. And that he, is he, not he, heat of the moment stuff. Exactly, it's not on at all. It's not in the spirit of the game at all. It's disgusting. Yeah, you see, yeah, 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 the unfortunate well, part of it. Sorry. Did you see his face yeah, after the when he did the pen? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you two keep apologising to each other and then talking <laughs> over each other. Sam, <laughs> Sam, make your point. The unfortunate part was that um, it happened when there was, a, you know, a, supposedly a no arms tackle. Um, on the guy's knee um, so it's kind of difficult to sort of reverse a decision on that when you know, I mean to give the penalty against and that sort of stuff so yellow it's, cards it's, it's, two it's, yellow it's, cards it's, so it was a bit complicated if, it, if, the, if St. Clair had just come out and said oh what the fuck ref that sort of thing or whatever then yeah you could easily deal with that but because there was something else that happened it made it a bit more complicated than how you deal with it yeah, I, and to be fair, he he did say um, what he thought, but um, asked for the review uh, in live play. It, the review come back. No, we need to uh, we need to look at that, um, yeah. and they did, and they dealt with it, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, and you saw Carl explain to the player when he said, "Don't talk to me like that again." We have a yeah. process for this, and you yeah. know it. Yeah, yes. so he, the player knows it. The player knows it will be reviewed for the TMO. Why the hell he burst out with like that, knowing it's going to be reviewed? And then did you see the look on Sinclair's, Sinclair's face afterwards? Oh, yeah, that cheeky, I got away with that look. It was that, yeah, I got away with that. I got lucky there. Yeah. I bet my outburst, <laughs> that could have been reversed. And I've just got away with fucking murder. Yeah, yeah let's see if he think, feels like that tomorrow night. To, to, yeah. be fair, to be fair, though, I, you know, you can sort of feel for Sinclair in a slight bit because the tackle was not a nice tackle when you get chopped at a knee like that. No, no, no. It is bloody bad tackle. It was legal. It was deemed legal. Sorry? They went and checked it. It was deemed legal, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was a penalty against it. His arms were out, but no effort to wrap. Arm, but no arms to wrap. Was the straight of the shoulder in the leg. Yeah. And he was going, he's kind of saving grace was the fact that he was already going down, as in, like, the tackler was already in his down at that height and he couldn't really see what he was bloody doing he actually missed yeah. the tackle that was the problem <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really bad dangerous tackle when you just chop the knee like that on a Saturday though yeah, no. like, this entire level where they've got TMO on a Saturday someone's at the bottom of a rock effing and blinding at me they're getting a car they're having a penalty against him and they're getting popped off they're not coming back on do you know what I mean like, yes, this is top yeah. level rugby. Yeah, I mean, it's different because it's all about the, the spectacle and it's all about the cameras. But on, on a regular Saturday in community level rugby, that needs to be dealt with and that needs to be dealt with a red card. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing for me is if, it, if the outburst was like, um, fucking hell, or what <laughs> the fuck, something like that, that's different to, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, yeah, but, that's yeah, clearly yeah. aimed at the ref. That, that's that's, that's, that's not just a that shout that. out because of what happened. On a Saturday, yeah. I had someone actually turn around to me, point at me in the, in the face and go, ref, are you fucking joking? I was like, no, I'm not. And you can have a red card as well, mate, because I'm not having that. No. <laughs> no, I'm well, not. I saw that on the, on the first game. Absolutely. First game I ever did in the US was... Uh, I was running to touch. Sorry about that, boys. That was uh, uh, one of the guys from West Sweden trying to ring me. <laughs> uh, but when I was in the US, I was running church, New York Athletic Club versus Dallas a few, quite a few years ago. And I can hear on the radio, um, the uh, it was uh, Mark over there refereeing the game. And he's, he's refereed the match. And I can hear one of the players say, fuck, referee, blah, 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 blah. And Mark gave me a yellow card for abuse. Then he kept on going and he switched it to a red. And I can hear the coach on the sideline going, what's going on? What's going on? So I relate to the coach what happened. He said, didn't he give a yellow card? He said, yeah, the first time the player said it, <laughs> the coach went absolutely fucking mental. Not with the referee, he thought the referee had done it right. But his player, he'd just given him the chance to come back on the pitch after doing this again before, like four or five weeks before. <laughs> he'd just come back on the pitch. This is your last chance. Don't do it again. Came on. 18 minutes into the game, gets red carded for this. Ooh. No playing rugby league. <laughs> Why do players do it? I don't get it. Just hold your tongue and walk away. Yeah, it's not like you you, you think you you know this from a from the minute you start playing rugby to the minute that you finish playing rugby. Um, but you know, uh, I, I I do want to move on a little bit and not dwell on that too much because um, during the break, um, Mr. Stennyford was um, relaying some more of his uh, his tour stories. And we think that's a, a, a jolly good place to go now. Um, so just, just remind us what we were talking about, Pete, during the break. Uh, no, we're just chatting about um, uh, Poland and stuff like that. But, but me and Julian have been talking about something today I completely forgot all about. Is that uh, I sent him a, um, a TikTok uh, video about a guy in the car. And as he's traveling along, uh, he, he needs he needs to go to the bathroom, and they won't you know they won't let him go to the bathroom or anything like that. So they uh, so they said, "Oh, go in a bottle." So they said, "Oh, yeah." So anyway, he ends up pulling down his kegs and shitting in this bottle. So me and Julian were relaying t- tour uh, stories about about um, things, and, and one of my tour stories were we're going to Wembley to play uh, Wembley Rugby Club. It's not there anymore. It's a house development, and uh, we're about an hour and a half in. And the toilet broke and we had a funnel with a bucket and everybody had to use this funnel to go in the bucket. Anyway, somebody dropped it at the back of the bus and all the urine and all the stinky piss went all the way down the back of the bus and all the way into everybody's luggage. And when we got, to Wembley, when we got to Wembley, that is exactly what everybody's, everybody's, everybody's bags on the top were all soaking wet, covered in piss. But Julian's story is a little bit different to mine. Yeah, well, we my club used to go up to the Isle of Butte every year on tour. We'd bus it; they'd bus it up there. And uh, on the way back home, the guys they used to park the bus over and then get the, the the they used to go over on the boat over to the Isle of Butte. And there's just like a hundred pubs on the Isle of Butte, so it was just a massive piss up all weekend. And then those with tickets would go to the game. And they'd all go back, piss it up even more, play a game against the uh, the Butte team, and then the Butte would come back to us the year after. But on the bus on the way back. The toilet had been, let's say, overused on the bus and it hadn't been emptied all the way up, all weekend, all the way back. So the bus was a bit smelly. One of the boys needed to go for a little sit down. He went in there, he couldn't breathe, he left, he got a gig out of breath and he kind of pulled the lever to dump the contents of the bus toilet whilst they were driving down the M5. And there's this little woman in a Ford Fiesta behind her, windscreen wipers knocking toffee crisps off the, uh, off the, off the car. <laughs> the bus had to pull in at the, the, the next services. The bus driver was then cleaning shit with his hands off the brakes because the brakes weren't working very well because they were full of shit. 
and uh, the club got I had to buy a bus, I believe, to because they were banned from <laughs> renting buses. For, for <laughs> now that wasn't the quite the story that I really wanted to talk about. It's um, it's how it's how members of the um, shall we say the elite squad to be the up and coming guys have been banned. Uh, from going on a night out with Pete. Oh, Maybe shit, yeah. Go on tour. Funny. I thought you were about home. <laughs> no, is that when we when I was, like, trying to get onto level five, uh, I was refereeing with... Um, can I say his name? No, j- just say no. somebody. All right, okay. So, to somebody that's doing very well at the moment. And uh, he, he came up to me and he said, oh, Pete, he said, we're a weekend away in Newquay. He said, I really want to have a... Oh, God, the dog's fired. Um, I really want to have a... Um, <laughs> <laughs> keep going you're a professional come on Pete yeah, sorry, you're a professional yeah. I keep really going. want to have a good I want to have a good night out but I don't want the RFU to know what I'm doing I said yeah don't worry don't worry I'll go and clear it so I went over to our like manager and said look if there's any problems just say you know this guy's coming out of, with me tonight if there's any problems just just you know turn a blind eye he was like yeah no problem no problem anyway Four o'clock in the morning, we rolled in, being in the mosh pit in the walkabout in Newquay, absolutely completely hammered, rearranging traffic cones on the way home and everything, right? Yeah, wearing your RFU polo shirt at this point probably didn't help. <laughs> no, uh, yes, well, probably, yes. Anyway, so, um, anyway, so Monday morning, he sent me a message saying uh, he just got received an email saying, don't ever go out with Pete Stoneyford again. <laughs> 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 I can't remember who the assessor was, but he was an old guy. From you, Cornwall. you do have a reputation that you c- clearly live up to quite well. I just have a bit of fun. Life no, is you do. You do have great fun, and that's why we can't wait for Tori to come back. Oh, no. Ah. I know what. Dendermon's been postponed. Um, so we'll see what. See what I, I suspect in about. a week or so, Orlando will be postponed again. Oh, yeah. There's no chance. Uh, which is Easter weekend, but yeah, we, we'll see. You know what they were like last year? It was four weeks before before they cancelled it, um, just because they were trying to get it on, as it were. Uh, anyway, um, before we go tonight, because we are running out of time, even though the show is only going to be about four minutes long now, we've edited all the swearing and the uh, the things we, we, we really can't say because we don't have a good legal team behind us. Um, and, and that's, um, did you see the video? <laughs> I'm laughing already, of the French D2 game where, was it Nantes uh, or Bézier, where they picked up the referee at the end of the game when they won? Yeah, this big yes. big Fijian picked up the referee in celebration that there was no try given or something. Yeah, so it was a, it was a, a TMO decision, I think. The try was uh, not uh, awarded, uh, and it was the end of the game, which meant that... Uh, uh, the team in white, which I think was uh, was not, uh, <laughs> won the game, and you could see you could see something was brewing because as he's listening to uh, uh, the uh, uh, the TMO, the referee's sort of nodding and saying a, a few words. Clearly, this guy's listening uh, and getting quite he's excited. Well. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he runs around the back after this guy's gone full time and picks him up from behind. <laughs> The best one I've seen is um, like my heart will go on. Put to it. Uh, <laughs> fucking brilliant. Hey, nobody puts baby in the corner. That could have been dirty dancing. Well, that one. Two things have come from this now. Jamie Roberts has asked Nigel Owens and Wayne Barnes what they would have done, and Owens has come back and said, "I would have turned around." No, 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 no. You've got to do what we made you do in your Owens accent. Otherwise, I'm going to play. At this point, the one you posted on the group, because that's really shit. So, in your best Owens accent, you've got to do that impression. <laughs> oh, we haven't met before, but I'm the referee. This is not strictly <laughs> red card, and you can, and you can't dance with him until you've bought him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the worst thing is, I've, we've had uh, all the Swedish players now saying they want to pick up uh, me and two of the other top refs over here. So they're going to lift us up. The best part is that I haven't seen them threaten it. So I'm now putting myself on every game that they're in. Now, you mentioned mentioned Barnes with that. Have you seen what Polly Barnes, Wayne's wife, has put on Twitter? 
Yeah, yeah, she put like 20, 20 quid. Yes. 20 quid to the next. <laughs> Anyone can do this to Wayne. I'll give 20 quid to anybody who does this to Wayne. Oh my it's God. Cool. Send it to Stockholm, we'll fix it. <laughs> what was it? What did Barnsley do when he went to Stockholm? He got, didn't he get ID'd or something? He got, he got ID'd in a bar and they wouldn't let him in. Yeah. And they how long ago was, was that? Like, don't come in. That's it. I don't care how old you are. And uh, all the other London refs just walked straight in the bar and went, bye. So Barnsley now, <laughs> bit grumpy. He tries to use his Wikipedia page's ID. No, it's Twitter. It. Twitter on it. So he goes back to the hotel, says, screw this, and goes to bed at like 10 o'clock. Oh, the morning after, everybody up at like 7 a.m. Got everyone down for breakfast, got everyone to the pitch, and they're all hung over the fuck. And he got them all playing touch rugby to warm up in the morning. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm sorry, boys, I can't join you right now. I've got to, I've got to do the assignments for this morning so I can sit down quietly and do all the paperwork while that lot were running around like fucking idiots, hung over the shit, with Barnsley telling them where to go. I tell yeah, you what, that's a man who can't take a joke. Yeah, but we're, we're, no, this is a better joke. Was What did, uh, what did Barnsley get assigned to that day? The final, that was it. No, the female games. Didn't he go IRB Law states that Wayne Bars can't oh, referee? God, no. Yes. He nearly got, uh, I, nearly yeah, go put, I was going to put him on a women's name and he went, no, 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 men's games only, thanks. And we were like, why? He said, IRB referee, I referee blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I find that funny, I'm not sure that that <laughs> needs to. That <laughs> I don't know. I don't well know. Man, I'm on that bombshell. <laughs> on that bombshell it's time to say goodnight um, don't pick up any referees if you've got rugby where you are because it always ends up in a dance and a snog we'll see you next week take care goodnight night. <laughs>